Okay, let's move on now and talk about playback. To see the images and clips that you've shot, all you need to do is press this blue play button, which is down here at the bottom of the camera. So if I press that now, when you press it, you'll be presented with the last image that you took. Pressing the info button now lets you scroll through various screens, displaying information that relates to the image that's currently on display. This last screen also presents us with some histograms. This one here is for overall brightness, and these three up here are for the brightness of each colour, red, green and blue. To navigate playback, you need to use these cross keys here. Pressing the one to the right allows you to scroll forwards through your media, and pressing this one to the left goes backwards. Like so. As this monitor is a touch screen, you can also scroll through your media like you would on the phone. So you can just swipe through your images, like so. And if you want to view the thumbnails, you can zoom out like this, or zoom back in by just pinching like so. You can also use these, these buttons up here, the magnification buttons, and you can zoom out. Or if you want to check the focus of your image, you can zoom in on a particular image just to make sure that everything is in focus. The other blue button down here is the erase button, which is this trash can right there. This deletes your media. If you press it, you're given the option to either erase your image or to cancel the operation. To erase, you just need to touch the touch screen there or navigate using the cross keys over to the erase option and press set. This is to make sure that you don't accidentally delete something. You can only delete one thing at a time here. There are ways to delete more items at once, as well as to clear all your media off the SD card, but I'll show you how to do that later. If you want to make sure that you don't delete something, there is a way to protect your images. That function is accessed via the quick control button when you're in playback. So let me just quickly zoom out of the image. And then if I press the quick control button, you can see that it's the first option that's highlighted there. You can only protect individual images. All you need to do is press the enable box on the touch screen or you can navigate to that using the cross keys. Then if you press the Q button again or hit the return arrow on the monitor like that, you're back in your playback mode. Now if I try to erase my image by pressing erase, you'll see that that sign comes up there saying protected. So let's go into the quick control screen again and look at some of the other options. So the second one down allows you to rotate your images this next one allows you to rate your images, which can make sorting them out easier later on. And this option here allows you to apply some of the creative filters that we've already mentioned. If you want to use this function, here in playback is where you should do it, because the camera allows you to create another image with the filter applied, so you don't lose the original unfiltered image. I'll let you explore these filters in your own time. Next, you have an option to save a copy of your current image at a different size, and then the last selectable option, which is this one here, allows you to choose different ways of jumping through your images using the main dial, which is this dial here. By default, this is set to skip 10 images with each turn of the dial, but you can set that to suit your own needs. All of these functions are also available in the camera's main menu, which is what I'm going to talk about next. But first, let's get out of playback and return to shooting by pressing this play button here, or lightly press down on the shutter button. If you press the menu button, which is here, you're taken to the camera's core menu screen, where you can adjust pretty much anything related to how the camera operates. The number of options available for you to alter does depend on the shooting mode that the camera is set to. So if your camera is in one of the simple auto modes, you only have a limited range of things available to adjust. To view the full menu, you need to be in one of the creative zone modes, as we are right now. And there are additional tabs when you've got the power switch turned to movie recording mode, which I'll talk about later. What you're presented with is a series of menu screens. You can navigate them using the monitor by pressing the tabs up here and tapping on the item that you want, like this. But it's easier when you use the cross keys and the set button, like so. I'm not going to go through everything in the menu, but I do want to show you a few important items. All of these tabs cover different areas of the camera's functionality. The first three, which have the camera icon, relate to the shooting options, which are those three there. The fourth one, with the rectangle inside the camera, has to do with live view and that's that one there. These two tabs are to do with playback, and the spanner relates to the different options for general setup, things like the date and the brightness of the monitor. And this last tab with the star is a bit like a shortcut menu for you to fill with your most frequently used menu items. The first item on the menu here is image quality, and you can tell that we've got it selected because it's highlighted red. We've already talked about image quality, but I want to use this item to show you how to make adjustments here in the menu. 
To enter into image quality and make changes, you need to press the set button. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. As you can see, you've got loads of different options there that you can choose from, and you can navigate these using the cross keys. You can also touch on the touch screen to make a selection. Once you've got your selection highlighted, just press set to come back to the main menu. If you don't want to make any changes, just press the menu button at the top there, and that will bring you back to the main menu as well. So as you can see, it's easy to use. Staying on this screen, one thing that you might want to do is turn off the annoying beep, especially if you've been using the LCD monitor a lot. So let's use the cross keys and navigate to beep, and then if I press the set button, we're into the menu. And then all I need to do is navigate down to disable, press set one more time, and that's turn the beep off. On the second screen, there's quite an important item, especially if you're shooting at a more advanced level, and that's custom white balance, which is that item there. This is where you would set your white balance manually, which is usually the most accurate way of doing it. Before you do this, you need to take a photograph of something white within your scene, and it's best if the white fills the whole frame of your shot. I like to zoom in on a white card that's been placed in front of my subject, but you could always take a shot of a white wall in the scene to get a decent white balance reading. To show you how to use this function, I've already taken a photograph of something white. So let's go into the camera's white balance menu now and see how you can do this. So if I press set, the camera automatically takes you to the last photo that you've taken. If that's not the image that you want to use, then you need to navigate to it. This is the image that I want to use, so if I press the set button now, that will take us into the menu. And then if I navigate over to OK and press set again, that will set the white balance. Now the camera will set my custom white balance according to the white in that picture. But you won't see the effect unless you select the custom white balance in your shooting functions. So that's why this screen has come up here. It says set white balance 2. So if I press OK and then press menu and go to the quick menu, I can set my white balance over there. Now let's go to the quick control menu by pressing Q and then let's navigate to the white balance setting. And if you press set and go into that, and then if I navigate over here to this symbol here that looks like an open book. If I set that, there you go. You'll find that this is a symbol for custom white balance on pretty much every camera. Now that that's selected, let's return to the main menu by pressing the menu button here. There you go. Okay, let's skip through to the playback menu now because I want to show you how to erase more than one image at a time. So you need to scroll down and select Erase Images and press Set to enter into the menu. As you can see, there are three options. The first one is Select and Erase. The second one is called Select All Images in Folder, and that's for when you've created a special folder for a particular set of images that you're working on. And the third one is Erase All Images from the Card, and that's to erase everything off the SD card. So let's choose the Select and Erase option by pressing Set, and you're taken straight into your images. So to select the ones that you want, you just press set button again, and this tick here will appear. And as you go through selecting images, you'll notice that the number next to the tick increases. Then you navigate through your images, picking the ones that you want. Once you've selected the images that you want to delete, press the OK icon, which is down here on the monitor, or press the delete button, which is just here. And you'll be asked if you want to go ahead. So if I do that, there you go, erase selected images, and then you press OK to confirm that selection. There's another way to delete everything off the SD card, and that's by formatting it. This is the method that I use, and I do it after every shoot once I've copied all my media over to a computer and backed it up. This is because it gives me a clean slate for the next shoot. Formatting wipes everything off the card, and then it restores the camera's original file structure. You do it here in the camera's first setup menu, so if I navigate over to that now, so if I navigate down to the format card and press OK and bring up this screen, this bar here tells us how much of the card has been filled up. We haven't got many images on there at the moment, so it's not that full. If I went over to OK and pressed that, that would erase the card. I want to keep the images that I do have, so if I go to Cancel and select that one instead. Moving on to the next screen, Auto Power Off is something that I would always change, because the default is 30 seconds, which means that the camera goes into sleep mode if you don't touch any of the buttons for 30 seconds, which is too short for me. Press the set button to make the adjustment, and then navigate down to 15 minutes, and press set again. I would normally have it set to 15 minutes because it's a waste of battery, especially when you're using live view. But for the purposes of this video, it's really useful to have the camera stay on for longer. 
The only other menu item I want to show you now is clear settings, which is under the last setup tab. So if I quickly navigate over to there, Clear settings returns you to the default menu settings as well as the default shooting settings. So it'll do things like return my white balance to auto and return the auto power to 30 seconds. Clear settings is useful if you've got a shared camera because it will get you back to basics without having to go through every item on the menu. Apart from clearing the settings, the other thing I'd recommend you do before you start shooting on a shared camera is to format the SD card. OK, so that's all I want to cover in the main menu for the moment, although we will come back here later on when we're talking about the camera's movie recording capabilities. Before we move on to do that, I just want to talk briefly about these terminals on the side of the camera, as well as how to save your media to the computer. Let's just pick open this cover here, and beneath it we've got two output terminals. This one at the bottom is a mini HDMI port, and that's for connecting up to a high definition TV or screen. And this one here is for connecting to a standard definition screen using an AV cable, as well as for connecting up to a computer via USB. The camera doesn't come with its own HDMI or AV cables, but it does have a USB cable provided, which is just down here. Using the USB cable is one way of getting your media off the camera's SD card and onto your computer. You just plug the small end in, which is this end here, into the side of the camera, like so. Just plug that in there. And then you connect this end up to your computer. And then make sure that the camera is turned on. Depending on your computer's setup, the camera will either appear as a device or a drive, or an image capturing application will open up automatically. Photos and video can take up a lot of room on your computer, so you need to be prepared for that. I'd recommend having an external hard drive to store all your media, and make sure that you've got some spare hard drives to back everything up to. You don't want to lose all your work because your computer decides to die on you. When I'm transferring media, I like to copy the entire file structure from the camera. This is just good practice, especially when it comes to video, because with certain editing software you need all the additional files and folders created by the camera to process the video clips. If you're using an image capturing application, you won't be able to copy the entire folder structure, but in most cases this shouldn't be a problem. However you do it, you need to be organised in how you store your media. What I recommend is creating folders for each shoot. The name of each folder should include the date of shooting and a title to describe the contents. The other way to get your media off your SD card is to physically take the SD card out of the camera, but make sure you turn the camera off first. So just pull that open, take it out, and then you plug that into your computer. Some computers have built-in SD card slots, otherwise you could use an SD card reader. Okay, I'll just pop that back in. And next we're going to look at the other side. Next to the out terminals, we've got these in terminals here. I'll just take that out and open this up here. There you go. So we've got these two in terminals. This top one here is for connecting a wired remote controller, which you'd have to buy separately. And then this one here at the bottom is for connecting a 3.5mm mini jack uh, 